but check this out. Um, in the last five years, right, the number of universities from China and Hong Kong in the top 100 globally doubled. Doubled. Wow. Yeah, they're at 12 now. Meanwhile, the U.S., well, it slipped a bit. Uh... So, yeah, let's get into this mm. because we're looking at what could be, I mean, a real turning point here. A big shift. A shift in where the world's, you know, scientific brain power is clustering. Our goal today is to kind of unpack what's behind this potential change. Right. What's driving it? What are the scientists actually experiencing? Yeah. And um, what could it mean for, well, for everyone down the line? And it's not just like one opinion piece saying this, which is what makes it feel significant. Exactly. We're seeing different angles all sort of pointing towards something happening. You've got arguments that the U.S. scientific edge is maybe eroding. Yeah, the very foundation. And then reports on the, you know, the real world effects on researchers right now. Uh -huh. We're even hearing things from like international science circles, noticing talent moving differently. Right. We've got some strong takes uh, tracking where Chinese scientific talent is headed. Some news reports, a look at what scientists are saying, you know, amongst themselves. Like on Reddit and places like that. Yeah, exactly. And analyses from think tanks focused on security and technology. So you put it all together and it's, well, it's complicated. Definitely intricate. So maybe let's kick things off with this idea of the U.S. potentially, you know, losing its top spot in science. Okay. So if you think about what really powered American innovation for so long, that kind of unique teamwork between government, academia, industry. Exactly. That whole ecosystem. There's an argument being made that this is under, well, serious pressure now. Uh -huh. The idea is that the system that gave us huge things, things we almost take for granted. Like the Internet, GPS. Right. GPS, even mRNA vaccines, Siri that this engine is being sort of undermined. And it's a pretty direct claim, isn't it? Huh. Suggesting recent White House actions may be framed differently. Framed around fighting anti-Semitism, yeah. Are actually hitting science by uh, leading to funding cuts for research. And the argument goes that this could actually flip the script, reverse that historical flow of knowledge towards the US. Wow. Reversing the flow. Yeah. And what's really uh, fascinating is a historical comparison that gets brought up. Okay. Thinking back to like World War II, when many scientists, particularly from Germany, came to America. Right. They found refuge and continued their work here. Exactly. So the implication is pretty clear. If the U.S. environment becomes difficult for science, well, other places are watching. They're ready and waiting to snap up that talent. Pretty much. And there are numbers, right? We mentioned the top 100 shift. Yes, but there's more. Another ranking looking at the top 500 universities. Okay. Between 2010 and 2020, the number of Chinese universities in that top 500 tripled. Tripled in 10 years. Yeah. While U.S. universities actually saw a decrease in their numbers in that same list. That's that's a massive change. It, it suggests something fundamental is shifting, doesn't it? It really does. It's about where the cutting edge stuff is happening, where the next generation might be getting trained. Not just prestige, but where future breakthroughs might come from, maybe outside the U.S. more often. And that leads to another kind of bold prediction being floated. Which is? That China might be getting close to a point where it doesn't, you know, need to rely on acquiring intellectual property from elsewhere. So becoming the main source themselves. The argument is they're on the verge of becoming that primary engine of innovation. That's a huge claim. And it kind of connects to those reports from, what, March 2025? You've got the layoffs. Yeah. Researchers being let go from big U.S. institutions. Yeah. CDC, NIH, NOAA. Uh -huh. And apparently Chinese recruiters were like immediately active. Right. Using social media, yeah. advertising jobs in Shenzhen specifically. Talk about being opportunistic, seizing that moment. Yeah. And it's not just about opportunities far away, is it? You mentioned the Massachusetts governor. Right. Maura Healy expressing concern about active recruitment happening right there. On U.S. soil. In the Boston area, specifically, Kendall Square, Harvard, MIT. Places like that. Her worry is clear. It's about U.S. safety, U.S. competitiveness. It paints a picture of a very focused effort to attract these top minds. It does. And it might not just be about money or labs, right? There's also the environment. You mean like that example of the Turkish student? Yeah, the doctoral student arrested after criticizing her university's stance on the Gaza war. It's not directly about Chinese scientists, but... But it speaks to the broader climate. The feeling of academic freedom, openness. Exactly. If that perception changes in the U.S., it could influence researchers from all backgrounds, you know, make them think twice. 
Okay, so that leads into the specific situation for Chinese scientists leaving the U.S. This isn't brand new, right? No, not at all. It's been building momentum. And that 2018 China initiative is often cited as, like, a major catalyst. Even though that specific program ended, the feeling hasn't gone away. It seems not. We're still hearing about prominent scientists, folks of Chinese origin, heading back to China, and that definitely causes concern in some U.S. circles. Yeah, but there's that other perspective too, right? The one that says, okay, maybe some are spies. Which is explicitly acknowledged that that's a real risk. But the argument is the overall contribution from Chinese talent has been so massive for the U.S. That ultimately it's been worth it. That's the phrase used. It's provocative. It really is. Yeah. But beyond opinions, we have some hard data on this departure trend. We do. The Center for Security and Emerging Technology has crunched some numbers. And what do they show? A really stark increase, like 75% in China-born scientists based in the U.S. leaving the country after the China Initiative kicked off in 2018. 75% jump. And by 2021, of those who left, two-thirds had gone back to China. That's fast and significant. Very. And it's not just the numbers leaving, it's also about how those who are still here feel. Right. The surveys. Exactly. Surveys show a really significant chunk of scientists of Chinese descent here feel unwelcome. Unsafe, even. Unsafe, yeah. Fearful about just doing their research, worried about collaborations with China getting them into trouble. So it's like this accumulation of policies and atmosphere Yeah. creates a feeling of... Precarity, maybe? Like walking on eggshells. It's not just one thing. It's a whole series of potential tripwires. Understandably, that might make people look for more stable ground elsewhere. And that's impacting their work directly. It seems so. Many are reportedly just not applying for federal grants anymore. Why? Too much hassle or fear? Both, it sounds like. Worries about legal risks with the paperwork, the disclosures, yeah. and also just the fear that any ties to China, even legitimate research ones, will bring suspicion. It reminds me of that analogy, the football team one. Oh, right. You recruit all these amazing players. Top draft picks year after year, but then you mistreat your star quarterback. And it sends a message to everyone else, all the up-and-coming talent. Yeah. Is this the right place for me? It's a powerful analogy. And this feeling, this unease, it's apparently not just among scientists of Chinese origin. Oh. There was a nature poll found that a huge majority, like three quarters, of American scientists have thought about leaving the U.S. Three quarters. Because of disruptions to science. That was the context, yeah. yeah. Recent disruptions, the general climate. That's, wow. That's concerning. And are they just thinking about it or? Well, it looks like some are acting on it. The job platform run by Nature. Yeah. They saw a big jump, 32% increase in people applying for jobs outside the U.S. early 2025 compared to the year before. So a real signal of intent. People are actively looking elsewhere. It certainly suggests that. Yeah. So if the U.S. is potentially becoming less appealing, where are people looking? Which uh, brings us to what other countries are doing. Right. And it's not just the formal data. You mentioned anecdotes, too. Yeah, that Reddit thread had a comment about scientists over in London uh -huh. just chatting amongst themselves about seeing more young American researchers showing up, looking for, you know, more stable situations abroad. Interesting. Word travels fast in those circles. It does. And another point from that discussion was about people in really specific niche fields. High demand areas? Yeah, but areas that depend heavily on consistent funding, those folks are apparently also weighing their options outside the U.S. Okay. So while the U.S. is maybe seeing talent, consider leaving. Mm -hmm. Other places definitely see an opportunity. Oh, absolutely. The European Commission, for instance, Ursula von der Leyen announced a huge investment. How much? Half a billion euros. 500 million. Specifically aimed at attracting international researchers. Wow. And what's the pitch? They're really emphasizing values. Freedom, openness, collaboration, diversity. They don't explicitly say, hey, America, but the message is clear. Offering an alternative. Oh, a welcoming one. Exactly. And France is doing something similar. Cool. Yep. Pledged $100 million to make Europe a safe haven for science. And he explicitly criticized the idea of restricting visas for researchers. A direct contrast. A very direct contrast. And it's not just the big EU players. The UK, Australia, Canada, Netherlands, Norway. They're all reportedly looking at or implementing plans to court researchers, too. A global competition heating up. Definitely. Mm. Even regions are getting in on it, like Catalonia and Spain. What are they doing? They launched something called the Catalonia Talent Bridge. 
specifically offering positions to American researchers who might be facing restrictions here. It really shows how seriously other places are taking this potential shift. They're ready to capitalize. Which brings us back to why some talent might be leaving the U.S. specific policy changes. Things from the Trump era, mostly. A lot stems from there, yeah. Things detailed by the Carnegie Endowment, national security rules around civil-military fusion, right. stricter visa and immigration policies generally, even potential changes like ending duration of status for student visas. That sounds technical, but important. Very. It would add a lot of uncertainty for students. And while these policies might seem general, they often hit Chinese nationals particularly hard. And that presidential proclamation from May 2020 about visas for Chinese grad students and researchers tied to certain entities. That one created a lot of confusion because it was so broad. What counts as a tie? How much support is too much? Exactly. Lack of clarity. It creates a chilling effect, potentially scaring off talented people even if they have no problematic connections. Then there are the deemed export rules. Right. Think of it like this. Sharing certain technical info with a foreign national, even inside the U.S., can be legally treated as exporting it to their home country. Okay. Expanding those rules makes it way harder for companies and universities to hire or collaborate with foreign nationals, especially from China, if sensitive tech might be involved. More hoops to jump through. And you mentioned ending duration of status for student visas. Yeah, if that happened, it would really mess things up for international PhD students and people on OPT. OPT is that post-graduation work period. Right. Optional practical training. A huge percentage of international PhDs and OPT folks in STEM are from China. So that change would hit them disproportionately hard. Might just push them to look elsewhere sooner. And H-1B visas the skilled worker visas. Denial rates went up significantly. That makes employers nervous about even trying to hire international talent. Fewer opportunities. Plus the green card backlog, that must be huge. Massive, especially for people from China, even with STEM PhDs, waiting years and years. It's a huge disincentive to stick around long-term. There's research linking those long waits to lower stay rates, right? Absolutely. More people choose to leave, often heading back to China. And then, on top of everything, pandemic travel restrictions just made things even harder for Chinese students and researchers. Just another layer of difficulty and uncertainty. Okay, so that's the U.S. side. What about China itself? What's their situation? Well, according to the Henrik Foundation, China's STEM talent pool is now the second largest in the world. They've really closed the gap with the U.S. That's huge in itself. It is. But they still seem to face challenges attracting top foreign talent, people without prior connections to China. So mostly attracting ethnic Chinese or those who studied abroad and are returning. That seems to be the main pattern, yes. But that trend of top researchers of Chinese descent in the West heading back if things feel unstable, that's real. That's definitely a key factor to watch. And one more complexity the Henrik Foundation points out is China's own dual circulation strategy. Focusing more inward on their domestic market. Right. Prioritizing the domestic cycle, how that internal focus impacts their global talent chase is another layer to consider. Okay. So wrapping this up, mm. it feels like we've touched on a lot of converging factors. Definitely. Potential shifts in U.S. scientific leadership driven by things like funding, policy changes, maybe a less welcoming atmosphere. While at the same time, China and other nations are stepping up. They're becoming more attractive, actively recruiting. Yeah, working hard to bring in and keep those bright minds. And caught in the middle are the scientists themselves, especially those of Chinese origin in the U.S., facing real uncertainty, making tough decisions about where to build their careers. Often looking beyond the U.S. now for those opportunities. It really makes you think about the long-term picture, doesn't it? What it means for innovation, for global competition, if that flow of talent significantly changes direction away from the U.S., which was for so long the prime destination.